at, at least somebody understands that. I don't, but you do. So as long as one of us understands what is happening. Good if someone understands, right? Then I'm happy. Oh. I turn on the YouTube on my uh, on my phone here. So we see if anyone has any uh, uh, remarks. We are live, I can see. Yeah. Let's start it with an awkward silence. Yes. So, I oh, I honestly have no idea who is watching now. We don't expect a lot of people in our first chat, but we are here and we are trying to uh, make a lovely, entertaining three to four hours chatting about, <laughs> our, <laughs> chatting about our favorite topic. Um, good. Um, for everybody who tunes in, this is our first Karate Talk. And well, my name is Hiro Miketa. I'm uh, part of the Missing Link community. And with me is my good Karate friend, Jorge Garibaldi. Um, there is a lot about us and how cool and how great and how awesome we are on the Facebook page. Uh, but that's not what we want to talk about here. We want to talk about how awesome, great, and fantastic Karate is. And the main question is, if there is still a space for traditional karate and whatever we are doing in a world of modern martial arts, um, where a higher sense of realism and a lot of straightforward punching is uh, fashionable right now. So is there still a space for modern martial, uh, for modern, no, for traditional karate in modern martial arts? And is this really a contradiction? Well, I, I suppose we have to start with, uh, with what you mean with traditional karate, because uh, my immediate answer will be, would be no, there is no place for traditional karate uh, in the sense um, that what most people understand for traditional karate cannot um, fulfill the the original goals in, in karate do. Um, so I would say no, there is no place for traditional karate. Funny enough, that's um, what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, it is indeed the main question that we always face when I'm being asked about um, uh, coming from another direction. The question that people ask me when they um, and they want to know if karate is suitable for them as a martial arts is um, something along the lines of, yeah, well, my son did karate and made his black belt when he was 11, and it seems pretty boring, and it seems to be for kids, and it seems to be something that we do in school, and you're basically always running up and down the gym, and uh, it doesn't seem to be very realistic. And my biggest issue over the last years was to say, um, Yes, it's true. A lot of karate, as we know it, isn't, isn't very exciting and lacks a lot of depth. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that a lot of people don't like to hear that. It's very annoying if you go around and tell people, uh, oh, you know, karate is quite nice, but uh, it's not really suitable for the fact. So maybe our question should be, what kind of No way. Don't tell me my microphone is off. No, 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 you're back again. <laughs> again I'm spreading wisdom here. <laughs> I'm spreading wisdom and you tell me the microphone is off. Did you hear my last question? Because this is no, the I thing didn't. that I found most important. Whenever I'm being asked if karate is suitable as martial arts, um, the point is, the real question should be which kind of karate is suitable. And what do we do with traditional karate to, um, to actually make it usable? Uh, I agree completely, and uh, I think we have we have to define yeah, the terms here because what we what I mean by traditional karate, and I think that what you mean here, here by traditional karate is not what traditional karate is or, or, or tries to be. Today, the, the doyos that call themselves for traditional karate, they do competition karate. They, they do the karate that was formed in the universities of, of Japan with, uh, with Kihon Katan Kumite, that, that, that 
tri trial of of of, uh, of understanding and um, and that led to the, the the place where we are today where we have that kind of karate in the olympics and then we i have to ask myself okay what is the result of that kind of karate and uh, how it stands i don't know if i don't you know if you if you no 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 we have an echo no, isn't that fantastic well hiccups technical hiccups were to be expected do you still hear me yes good perfect um i don't know if that was uh, um, noticeable in denmark um at the time but some probably 20 years ago now we had a huge split in german karate because a big group of karateka split off the official german karate federation in order to do traditional karate and traditional karate for them was the main issue if you fight with a shobu weapon yeah exactly somebody uh, upon a system in uh, in the kumite shiai yeah. So this was the big discussion. Are we wearing uh, fist protection and do we fight for three points or do we find Ippon, which was apparently the soul and spirit of karate at the time for a lot of people, was that you have to follow the Ippon idea that uh, one punch kills your opponent or something like this. Yeah. Um, that was funny enough a time when I was really struggling with the question, do I even want to do karate anymore? Yeah, this was when we, um, uh, must be longer than 20 years thinking about it. This is when a, a friend of mine and, and I, we, uh, we were looking for experts in self-defense because we had been asked by women who told us, uh, hey, we want to do some women's self-defense um, specific for us. And we tried to put a course together. We were like a bit overly self-confident, like, ah, that's no problem. We show the girls how to punch and kick. And we failed spectacularly because women's self-defense needs so much more than just kicking and punching. Exactly. And we found back then the police in Bonn, which was capital of Germany back then, and it was a, a <clears throat> melting pot of all kinds of martial arts and especially of people who were very, very realistic in their martial arts. And everything we did was suddenly put in question. The long techniques, the low stances, uh, the quick techniques, the Ippon idea. Uh, you see, we start, suddenly were standing in front of people that you couldn't strike down with one punch, no matter what you try to do. Um, so for us, the, the question of tradition or not suddenly became a question of, are we actually doing martial arts? Or are we doing, well, a competitive uh, a competition sports where we follow certain rules and uh, that's about it. Um, yeah. Well, that is good that you say that because I think that that development took place uh, all over the Shotokan world. Um, uh, I don't um, my I don't come from Shotokan. I come from Wadoryu, but um, and we actually never had that fight. We, we our main schools always went in for sports karate, all out. Um, but I struggled with, with uh, uh, the same issues that you you do and uh, that you did, and uh, I actually um, asked myself if I had if I wanted to train karate anymore because I I thought I, I graded to shodan uh, and that was hard, fast, punch kicking, blocking karate, and uh, and then I graded to nidan and that was harder, faster punch kicking <laughs> okay <laughs> blocking karate and i th thought to myself but is he, what, what, wait, is there where, where's the limit how much faster harder uh, punch kicking blocking karate can you do at that time i had a look at the gradings for the higher ranked karate yeah. and i noticed that at fifth or sixth down or something it, it wasn't really harder or stronger or yeah and everybody told me, yeah, it's all about experience and it's all about the deep knowledge and so on, but I couldn't see it in the gradings. Mm -hmm. I found it so difficult to see in the... You couldn't see it on the people that were highly graded. They didn't do anything better than I did when I was in Eden. You're off again. No, we're off again. Do you hear me again? Yeah, I do. <laughs> so, um, 
at least not in the grading. The grading didn't show the competence of those people. I couldn't see that that in their technique either. And I, I, I I'm, 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 I'm just being sincere. <laughs> I couldn't see. I just could. I, I, I saw people doing the same as I was doing, and they were fifth, and I was and I showed them or And I felt that I was training three different things. We would do Kihon, a lot of Kihon, because Kif, Kihon is very important. Very important. And then we did Honey, a lot of Kata, but... because Kata is the base of Karate. Yeah. And then we did Kifo. And there was no connection between the three. And when you asked, uh, I, I had a, a, a Japanese sensei, and I said, Sensei, well, uh, what is this? Come on. Okay. And what is this? Come on. And everything was posturing. Uh, and and what, what, when we do this, what, what, uh, come on, and, and this is punching, 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 and blocking. And when you try to apply that to, to real life, you, you, you get your ass kicked. It's also mainly boring because there's ne never anything. I mean, it, now, it, OK, we do what you said we should do. We are probably now already um, making a few okay. people angry, although we, we have 10 people watching, and uh, all of them are basically busy telling us Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you too. <laughs> Us and Tanya, of course. Um, so uh, we, we probably don't piss off anyone just now, but of course we are running that risk. For a lot of people, karate is a very ritualized form. It's set. It can never be changed. We had a very high-ranked uh, black belt uh, in Germany when uh, Bunkai was introduced to uh, competition, to kata competition. And I mean, we are talking about Bunkai in competition. We are talking about uh, athletics. It's awesome. It looks brilliant. It's pretty cool. But it has nothing to do with actual fighting. It has nothing to do with the kata. It's supposedly analyzing or, uh, or making but an no. Not an analysis. It's a brilliant show, and I'm 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 in awe of the show that happens there, and I'm in in awe of the of the way people present kata. It's it's pretty brilliant what they are able to do on an athletic level. Yeah. It's just as always so often when I meet people who are outstanding on an athletic level, then they are not necessarily doing martial arts because an outstanding athletic level means outstanding athletic training with people who are outstandingly talented and it's easy for a teacher to work with talented people you push them to their limits their limits are very far out and you push them very high very impressive but it does nothing to the average person who wants to learn martial arts as a holistic system with a lot of depth also that uh, i think um... A lot of the qualities that you cultivate when you're training that kind of training is are not martial qualities. You cannot use them in a martial setting. They are athletic qualities. Uh, they can jump high. They can kick fast. They, uh, uh, but uh, they're uh, they're not better fighters. I mean, just take. Uh, I don't, know, I don't know Jackie Chan or whatever of these these guys in the, in the movies. If you put them in a real uh, situation, they cannot do anything because then oh, they. Come on! Not I, what... I, 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 come on. I, I don't let anything come on Jackie Chan because he was in a brilliant German show. Yeah. A lady uh, made a bet that she can punch through. Um, I think concrete plates or something, and uh, with an egg in her hand, without yeah. damaging the egg. And she was not able to do it because it's really a different, a difficult task, and it was in front of a millions audience, a huge audience of millions of people. Um, and Jackie Chan, just there as a talk show guest, just stood up and did it, just like this. He is outstanding in uh, in an wow, Come on, well, actually, he up. said I, I, I named his name because he said it himself that he yeah, wasn't. He's a Beijing opera dancer, or, or I think a, a, a Canton opera dancer, but uh, that's what he said. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And actually, who cares if you can punch with an egg in your hand? I would throw that egg before I punch somebody in the face. <laughs> it's not an martial quality. Yeah, blasphemy. 
Oh, now I understand pin and needle. That's why you do like this. Is you're holding X when you are punching. <laughs> you're off again. Yes, you you're gone. No, you're not back. No, you're not back. So I talk until you get back. <laughs> you're off. I'm sorry. Here, no, you're not. Uh, anyway, the good thing about martial quality is that you have to specifically train for it. Now you're back, I think. Did you hear me coughing? Yes. Now you're you're back. That you have Wonderful. to specifically train for martial qualities so if you train to jump high you'll be you're gonna be really good to jump for jumping high but that is not a specific martial quality and that and that, that gets us back to okay let's define traditional karate and in for me traditional karate is a system that is recorded in kata and that you have to open up and to identify strategies, tactics, techniques, and a methodology of training. If you don't do that, you are not training karate. You are training kata, kihon, and kumite. And kihon is just a, a very small space where you where you work with yourself, and I love it. If you don't understand kata, you're just dancing. You, you can just as well turn the music on. It's much fun, much more fun. And the, the kumite you're doing is not no, has nothing in common with your kihon or your kata. Because it is competition kumite. And this is exactly, you hear me? Yes, I hear you. I'm very conscious about the, the audio thing here. Um, that is exactly the point that we face with a lot of other modern martial arts. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of these martial arts that are instant karma so they deliver uh, right away a lovely feedback for the person training it mm? um uh, i worked with a, with a very uh, very lovely Krav maga teacher here in manchester um who does very interesting stuff it's really nice um there's nothing nothing wrong about what he's doing and he's very successful because people get what they pay for from the first lesson Mm -hmm. They're being told, we teach you how to punch people, and you go there and you get uh, hands-on training for... The funny thing is, nothing that they do in these classes is um, new to us. We are doing the same stuff. We are just coming from a different angle. And this is, for me, is the big question about traditional karate. If traditional karate is just a different kind of uh, competition, shi'ai, then it's not um, it's not traditional. The original tradition of karate is uh, the question of learning how to fight and using this this uh, this fighting as a means of uh, um, also building up your your personality, your character, um, learning learning something about communicating with other people, uh, finding health, finding inner balance. Uh, all these things have always been more important for me than the actual fighting content, because I hardly ever go out on the street and punch people in the face. That's just not, I don't do it. Yeah, I hardly ever have the need for it. It was always more important for me to have these deeper, this, this deeper content of martial arts. But I was always aware, without actual fighting, you won't reach it. Mm. If you just dance, or just pretend, or uh, just learn a sport, you will not be able to learn the deeper content of the martial art because it will be missing from what you're learning. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at uh, the many, many messages we get here. Oh, um, Klaus says that going to seminars with Sasha and me, Sasha, my colleague from Missing Link, um, gave him the chance to learn about karate in a less traditional form. That, that's an outrage. We are absolutely traditional, of course. Yes. Actually, I, I think what you do is more traditional in a sense that it gets more into the root of the information that is uh, encoded in the system than those that call themselves for traditional so actually uh, I, i've been to your trainings uh, you visited us in denmark and uh, and i agree with everything 
he says, but you're not untraditional. I, I would call you the opposite. Uh, the, 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 the problem is what we call for traditional today. <laughs> exactly. Um, if tradition is uh, obeying all the rules and the proper uniform and uh, the bowing to, to uh, everything in the gym and uh, um, the question of uh, if you follow the rules that um, people have given us thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago, um, uh, that of course is not, then, then I'm not very traditional. But um, you have to yeah. define rules in another way. I don't refine, I don't define rules as my sensei, my sensei did this, so I, I do the same. Exactly. I try to think my sensei developed this. He thought this way. I have to develop. I have to think. So I, I, you, you start to saying that karate, for most people, karate is a set system. And when I, I, I look at my sensei's uh, picture and I say, Oscar sensei, I mean, you developed a lot of things. It's not like he took something and gave it to me untouched and un, undeveloped. And, he he put he poured himself into it. He analyzed. He developed. He came with new ideas, and I think that's what we going have to do. We have to take the same material and understand it from our times perspective. That's our responsibility. Our responsibility is to bring karate forward and upward. If we if we give it to our students the same way we we we, we got it ourselves. We are cheating them. We are taking from them. It is very, very sad uh, if you just if you are basically just a vessel getting something here and de delivering it there. It's very sad, and it doesn't. It betrays our students and us of a lot of possible input because, um, well, there are two things. The one thing is when we talk about traditional martial arts. Before before I lose that, um, we. We, we, we are at risk of pretending that we know what the traditional meaning of a kata, for example, was. I mean, it's a nobody. fact. No, nobody can know what somebody 500 years ago, when he developed a kata, thought about exactly. So what we are obviously doing is very often reverse engineering, and we use our own um, experience, our own knowledge, um, our historical knowledge, uh, our knowledge of, uh, of, of uh, philosophical background, of fighting background, we use this to analyze the kata, but it is a reverse engineering. We cannot claim that we know what the people back then knew, and we know the only real wisdom, and everybody else is just wrong. This is this happens very often when people speak about real tradition, that they say, ah, we, we know, um, yeah, my master was a closed-door student of the master of someone else, and uh, they know all the secrets that you can't know because you were never inside that room. And, uh, uh, this is, this is, you know, becomes a competition and it's very, very vain at times. The, See, I have, we train katas in my, at my dojo that I de developed. I have students that have followed me for 15 years, fourth them, great, uh, and none, none of them understands my idea with the kata. And they work with me every day of the week. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm very insisting that a good teacher is most of the time teaching out of their comfort zone. Yeah. Because I cannot, you know, you have brilliant martial artists out there. Yeah. Um, but maybe maybe we can here uh, bring Klaus back into the discussion because he said uh, um, Jackie Chan uh, is trained in Beijing Opera, um, but he wouldn't want to be in a brawl with him on the other side. Uh, that's probably true. Um, but I, I still try to save Jackie Chan, whom I'm a big fan of. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I love him as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, that aside, there are brilliant teachers. Who are basically always teaching what they are able to do themselves best. This is always nice. You're standing in front of a big group, you're teaching stuff that is in your comfort zone, and then you have people copying it. Huh? Yeah. The students that you have will always be mini me's of you. They will always just copy what you do, unless you are able to, uh, 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 to, to uh, connect to your students in a way that you give them what they need, not what you can do best and not what some master 
500 years ago or 300 or 200 years ago allegedly thought best. But we, uh, my, my goal is to hand out something to my students that they can use. So I, 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 I have a little different approach. I think I, for the last 20 years, I had this um, project for my own development was, that was I want to develop or discover a total theory of karate. Uh, you know how we, in the same way we, we want to develop a theory that describes all of nature. Uh, I, I went out of my way to try to, I, I'm not there, obviously. Uh, but what I did then is that I, I, I tried to, to define some uh, ground uh, rules, principles, and I applied technique from those principles. So I don't care how the, uh, my student's stance is or whatever. I, I just want to convey them the principle. And their work is to apply them to their own anatomy and their own, own, own technique. Uh, so obviously, some will uh, uh, apply these things different to others because they're higher, taller, shorter, faster, whatever. So you apply it to your anatomy, your uh, reality. Uh, so I'm not that much interested in in, in, in in technical development per se because I find it I find it to be uh, shallow. I want them to to know how to fish. I don't want to train them to fish one fish. You know. Uh, so that's my that's my approach. Yeah. Now you're off again. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You're off. <laughs> Hit your computer or something. I can't hear you. I play a little song for you while you try to get your mic. <laughs> now you're back. <laughs> um, it, I, I think the microphone on my PC um, just starts sleeping um, when I don't say anything for a while. So um, I should probably make things like <clears throat> in between while you are talking. So the microphone, yeah, get something. Um, we, we have a few uh, a few remarks here in our chat, which is quite interesting. Manuel um, uh, has a has this big question um, with, of the difference between a bunkai competition and real bunkai. What could we do as a teacher to teach a good bunkai? I think we're in the middle of it, aren't we? Yeah, and actually, I think I I. I, I the, the mere thought that you can perform a kata and perform a bunkai is sheer stupidity. It, 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 you have to be an ignorant person to think the thought that kata and bunkai are for showing to other people. You know, we have this, this very lovely way um, my, my colleague Connie has, uh, has uh, introduced it to Missing Link. Um, now, I keep forgetting the three very cool and posh Japanese words to describe it, so I have to do it in English. Um, she says a, a kata has three forms. It has the presentation form, where it is all about looking good, enjoying yourself, enjoying your ego, uh, presenting something, uh, making other people happy, like a dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So it's the presentation form. Then we have the health form, the health aspect. So we can train the same kata under the uh, under the uh, uh, premise of um, looking good, mm -hmm. premise of uh, being healthy. So we use it to to bring our cardio system in uh, in, in action. Uh, we train it uh, slowly to to get our muscles in relax, uh, re relaxed mo uh, motion. Um, we train it maybe as a meditation form, depending on how you do it. Uh, a lot of kata have an energetic level. We have this. Um, this like my, my my former kinesiology uh, uh, teacher um, spent a lot of time exploring kata under their energetical mm. aspects. So looking which muscle, which group of muscles is being triggered by which movement, mm. and uh, what does this do to our energy system, and how can we use this to analyze kata? Exactly. Um, it was always very exciting. 
So this would be the second aspect, the first one, the presentation, the second one, the health aspect, yeah, fitness, health, meditation, energy, um, getting rid of tension in your body, whatever. And the third aspect is kata as a textbook for fighting. Yeah. So now, seeing that we have kata in all these three aspects, we can allow people, without, without uh, saying, oh, that's rubbish, we can allow people to train a kata on competition. We will just always have to say, that's just one aspect of this kata. And if you want to do karate for a lifetime, not just for a short competition time, but for a lifetime, you will want to train the other aspects of this kata as well. The older you get, is more of the health aspect. When you're young and wild, you want to train the, uh, the fighting part, the principles, the ideas. You're off again. Touch, touch your, your, your mouse, please. Say something. No, you're not back. You're not back. Well, while you while you figure that out, you're not back yet. <clears throat> I want I want to say like this. I'm I'm not completely in agreement. I don't think karate or kata has a level for show. That's a modern interpretation or for presentation. Uh, kata, the only presentation uh, part I see in kata is when your sensei look at, looks at your technique and gives you feedback. That's it. Um, I see a lot, a, a, a lot of, of other levels in it, uh, uh, where you work with your energy levels, your structure, your your you learn to separate your your body so you can use your tendons against your bones and your muscles against your tendons and so forth and so forth there is a deep 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 sea of knowledge to discover down there none of which have with presentation to do because you know as well as i do that we have a, an omote side and an ura side and what the eye sees is not what is real I've seen this so many times that I, I do what I see and I do it wrong. And it's not until the key information is conveyed to me that I said, that's what you did. Okay. You cannot see unless you have trained eyes. But uh, the, the parameters by which you, uh, you give these at least points, uh, or who wins the gold medal in kata, they don't have anything to do with karate. Actually, I had a discussion with a Danish national uh, judge about kata, and he read for me the rules, how they give points in kata in international competition, in the WKF. And my question to him was, do you think that Gishin Funakoshi could live up to these rules? I said, no, okay, but he's the master of your style. What do you think? So you're actually giving points some th for something that your master will never be able to do because he will never be able to jump two meters in the, in the air or whatever. And I don't hear you yet. <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> you're off. Not longer. Now you're back, you're back. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. But please, you can, we're having feedback. So some of your feature, uh, speakers. Yeah, this is a problem. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. Uh, How do you feel bad? Uh, you have to close for your for the speaker on your computer. Mm. You're off. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, but you're again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for the <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you perfectly, but you're giving feedback. So please, close for the speaker.
Now I can hear you. <laughs> I cannot hear you. And now? Yes, now I can. I'm on. Good. Uh, I have no idea. It's an issue with the um, with the uh, PC, and um, obviously. The microphone is not being sent to you until I have another microphone. Uh, in this case, on my phone, I try to join from the phone. Once I had that on, the other micro microphone did work again, and we had this lovely feedback. Uh, <laughs> so for all of those who are still there, uh, <laughs> totally. a, a sudden ear infarct or something, let's see how long this lasts now. Um, I am not sure. Let's see it like this. Any martial arts also has to do with ego, doesn't it? We're getting rid of. <laughs> Are you still hear me? Do you still hear me? Yes, getting rid of a ego. <laughs> getting rid of ego. Now, that's a hard task, isn't it? I, I usually call my sensei the man with the needle because my sensei used to live in England and I would train him in Denmark and I would fly over to to uh, the uk and i trained really really hard and really really deep so i went i can i can this shit. come on bring it on and here we, here we go and I felt, okay actually i know i don't know that much anyway <laughs> i have to train harder <laughs> reminds me of the uh, the the um humiliation i had when i was going for my third dan and i went to another teacher than usual and he had a look at my uh, Koko Tsudachi and was like, that's wrong. Oh. And I was like, listen, mate, I'm, I'm really, uh, come on, I'm going for the third down here. I know a Koko Tsudachi. <laughs> but that fellow told me about Koko Tsudachi. It was very valuable. And I'm still, I'm still telling this story to my students when they struggle with this dance. Okay. Yeah? So um, there is always something new to learn. And it's very good to keep this, this beginner's mind and be open for it. On the other hand, I would prefer a sensei or a teacher to be empowering rather than being a needle. Yeah. Or if you're a needle, it would be good to be a needle in an empowering way. Yeah. But I think when your ego is inf uh, when your ego is inflated, you will always feel it like a negative thing to get deflated <laughs> until you get down to earth and say, "Oh, okay, that was good. I was." I was a little bit full of myself. <laughs> Sadly, this is something that really doesn't fit to competition karate. Then, exactly because you, you, is there. You have the biggest egos of all. Sadly, it also doesn't fit to many of the modern martial arts that we are competing with. Yeah, I mean, if you go to a, to a martial arts style that is very realistic and very hands-on and uh, straightforward to the point and uh, supporting your fighting ability these martial arts styles are meant to fit you up to win in fights mm -hmm. and that holds a risk yeah it holds a risk that the the, um, the element of uh, fighting with yourself is not necessarily there now i always see that the the very famous um Mixed martial arts, that's right now all the hype. Um, it's not bad. There are brilliant MMA teachers who are caring for the for the holistic aspects of martial arts as well. They're coming from a certain background. They are um, they're knowing a lot. They're knowledgeable. They, they care for principles. They care for, uh, for uh, tactics, strategies. They are, they are not bad at all. And you can learn brilliant stuff from them. The problem is that a lot of people who go to their schools might not be looking for that something that i that i always fancied that um a certain group of people the very confrontational um uh, aggressive uh, people often don't stick with me mm. because they find my approach too boring mm. there's a detour why do i have to learn a kata um, if I want to learn to punch someone down, I better train to punch someone down uh, rather than uh, a forum that uh, doesn't seem to have a, an, an instant connection to fighting. Yeah. So um, the, the additional content that we have in traditional martial arts is actually quite good to uh, to form a community of people who are like-minded and nice and who stay with you for a long time. Um, 
I mean, there is really no way you could you could uh, uh, um, you could enter your karate school or my karate school and just come once in a month exactly. because you get no. Exactly. Actually, you I, I usually say that to if you go to MMA class. You will in, in that you come once in a month. You get a bit of of uh, uh, of uh, punching bag, a bit of sparring. You feel brilliant when you come out from there, but you didn't really improve. And with our martial arts, you will notice that you didn't improve. Exactly, and you you will feel it as uh, immediately, as soon as you step step into the door. You you will see. You will feel. Oh, I haven't been here in a month, and I can't make. Yeah. But also, I usually say to people. Um, training martial arts to fight is like swimming for the scenario that your ship may go down. How how big is uh, the possibility that your ship will go down and you have to swim for your life? I mean, it's pretty small. You have to be a, a, some kind of um, antisocial criminal type. To, uh, or a psychopath, psychopath, or something, to to train a, a lifetime for the case that you will go into fight. I mean, after three months of training, you're there, man. You can't. Defend yeah, you know, you, of course, you have people who actually work in surroundings where they yeah. constantly do have to fight. But that's not the normal. Yeah, you, yeah. No, these people bring a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge. But martial arts, really good martial arts. Is not meant to make them more fit for fighting only. It's meant to to provide a lifelong opportunity of personal development, which sounds a bit big and a bit over the top, but that's what it in the end is all about. Um, you want to have something that people can do all their life, exactly. not just something that they do for a few years to peak performance, and then that's that. You know what they said this. The saddest thing I, I've seen on YouTube lately is this video with um, 70 year old, years old in, in, uh, so guys in the 70s fighting at the GKA Japan Championship. Uh, and I think, oh my God, this guy's been training for 40, 50, 60 years and they still don't get it. Now you're off again. You're off again. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you're off again. I having a ball here with myself, but <laughs> No, you're off. I think you have to buy a new mic. Please. <laughs> you're off you're off no you're not here da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. you hear me now good um something's something's off there with the driver or something before we do our next talk i repair that or i will be online with the phone um either way um if after 40 years of martial arts the one thing that you still want to do is compete with youngsters. That is a bit, yeah. I mean, it was always one of my things that I wanted to have a martial art that is uh, built for people who are not super duper fit. Okay. Training someone up and giving them uh, a program of 500 push-ups a day and uh, uh, and punching back and punching the, the fists against the wall until they are, uh, they are so strong that you uh, yeah, that you can basically grab into the chest of your opponent and rip the heart out of whatever, yeah? <laughs> All these things are... Th that is very... Uh, it, it, of course, it's hard to train like this. I, I, I'm not cut out for it, for example. I, I really, you know, I really like to type a text message occasionally. That is much more important to me than, you know, grabbing into the chest of my opponent and ripping out whatever, yeah? So um, the, the point is, it's hard to train like this. But it only trains one ability. It trains your stamina, your ability to suffer, and your will to pack a punch. This is all good. This is all valuable. But it's very, very short. It's just a little bit of what martial arts should offer. You said one thing there that I think is, is, the, is the core of everything. Do you train for life or do you train for death? 
And I don't train for somebody else's death. I train for my own life, my quality of life, my longevity, my uh, ability to move and be active as long as possible. My mental health. It's about mental health. Karate is very much about mental health. You see, one of the things that I'm always raging on about is how we live in a society where people do what we just do. They communicate online. They are talking on a, on a virtual level. They are, uh, they are using their, their online ability to make 500 friends around the globe. But it's very, very difficult to gain a friendship that is close, where you actually have to sit with each other, talk. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so. We live in a life that is more and more virtualized in our in our book in this. Uh, oh, I don't have a book here. I should have brought a book because this is a brilliant way of selling it, right? Um, no, I don't have one. One of the points in our book uh, where we describe our style, the missing links of martial arts. Um, one of the points there is that we say the modern life suffers from uh, uh, disembodying. We are basically um, I think we call it deep bodification or something like this. It's a bit of a weird uh, 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 word, but still. The idea that our modern life loses our physical, our vital part of life. We are more and more working with our brain, with our ears, with our eyes. We are not so much using our body to communicate, to make experiences, to learn something new. And that's very, very risky on the long term. Because a lot of emotional qualities, empathy, um, uh, the will to, the motivation, uh, the will to do something, the will to, to uh, stand something, uh, lift. Yes, you're off again. So I guess the mic is mine. And I, I agree with you, Hero. Uh, the connection between the spirits all, no, you're off, the, you're off. I keep talking until you're on and back again. Uh, but the spirit, the connection between the physical, the mental, and the and the and, and the, the spiritual, the physical, and the mental is is we are one body, yeah. we are one mind, we are one spirit, and you have to use that in every aspect of your life. Say something. I think no, you're not back. You're not back. Sorry. Um, and karate do gives you that opportunity to. Educate and yourself. I, you know, you're back. You're back. Do you hear me? Fantastic. I try. Yes. I try to bring that last that last point in because that's so important. To me, one of the things is that we are as martial arts teachers, as everybody who does physical education, but especially martial arts teachers, we are on the bleeding edge of society right now. We are providing what people need. We are providing the uh, the, the the physical experiences and the 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 mental. <laughs> yeah, the mental attitude, no, yeah, uh, the, the, the philosophical background, we are providing something that our uh, society as a whole lacks very badly. Exactly. In my opinion, one of the most important things that we do, and also something that is very different between a traditional martial art and a modern sport. Exactly. Yes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I agree 100% also because this is not about uh, consensual uh, violence. This is not about fighting another person. This is about where are your, your boundaries? Where are your, how can you develop? How can you get out of your contact uh, uh, comfort zone? Um, this is how you master yourself. Uh, but the trouble today, if you say this to a, a person that just walked in from the street, uh, they won't buy it because they want instant gratification. You're off again. <coughs> they want instant gratification. So you, um, so it's. I started karate to learn to fight. The, the problem was that some months al along the line, I was totally hooked on this system, on, on this historical and technical and conceptual context. Uh, and uh, uh, that's why I, I stayed. Now so you're we're trying to 
but you're giving me uh, yes. so let's try again if it works now now it's work, it works can you can you, can you turn your phone can you turn the phone <laughs> so the, the, if there is no echo now this no, might it's, be it's, Lovely. In this now, of course, I can't keep the angle proper. I have my PC in a proper angle, so you're not witnessing the lovely paintings. <laughs> my daughter left on my office wall, but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, you can hear me. That's more important, I guess. Yeah. Um, of course, most of us started martial arts because we did want to fight. It was an uh, an important part of of the motivation why we come. To, or why we start the martial arts training. For a lot of people, that's important. Um, the question is if this is the only thing you get out of it in the end, and what your teacher actually offers you beyond that. Yeah. Actually, I think my, my own personal experience was it was a white belt uh, for uh, six months, something like that. And just at the end end of the, those uh, six months, I was uh, I was walking with a friend. Right? And these four guys jumped in. And uh, during the six months I've been training. And these four guys jumped my friend and I, I, mean, I had to, to do something. So I stepped in between and this guy turns against me and I went, Kingeri Chokusugi, boom, down. Next guy comes my way, I went, Kingeri Chokusugi, down. I, and I thought for myself, it works, it works. <laughs> <laughs> and then I knew I, I don't have to train karate anymore for fighting. I mean, King of the Goods, yeah, you, you win <laughs> if you're bright, correctly. <laughs> yeah, I, I admit, I admit that over the years I met so many people who are so superior fighters, know so much, are so very, very well trained, and uh, have so such a range of abilities and possibilities. Um, that I'm, uh, I'm not convinced that three months is enough. <laughs> um, you're right. The 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 basic punching someone in the face you can learn very quickly. I remember a friend of mine who always got people into his karate dojo by uh, offering um, uh, a seminar, um, three deadly punches in three hours. <laughs> Instant gratification. Yeah, and you always had people coming there. And uh, I, now I don't know how much the conversion rate was in the end, how many people actually stayed afterwards. Uh, I can't tell. But um, the, uh, the, this really worked. And this instant karma, as we call it, that is uh, very... See, I had a talk with a yoga teacher a few weeks ago. Um, her classes are always bursting. They're, they're full, full. Full to the brim, and I was like, uh, "Heaven's sake, uh, uh, what's the secret to your success?" And she was like, "Yoga, <laughs> because it's so easy. You have a good place, and you do uh, you do proper yoga, and that's it. Because people come there, and people get something out of it right away. And of course, you can do it very in depth and over a long time, and you can learn a lot out of it. This is a brilliant, brilliant way of uh, of improving yourself." But you can also come for the instant gratification, the instant karma, and you still get something out of it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is one of the things that we don't offer in traditional martial arts. Um, the the uh, oops, uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you lose your phone or what? Uh, yeah, I dropped my phone. It's uh, well, now yeah. it tells me already in a call. Listen. Uh, Am I out of the call now? Uh, yeah, yes, uh, no, no, but I, I, I can hear you, but I, I can't see you anymore. Uh, you see now? Me now? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, on the technical level, we still have to work a bit, although uh, it might be, might be quite entertaining for people watching. Now seven, in between it was 12. Wow, we, we love the love. Five people out of the chat, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and you know why? Because you talked about Jackie Chan. I killed it. I'm sorry. Honestly, I, 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 you didn't get me started on Bruce Lee because you <laughs> still me the Bruce Lee sentence was missing so far. <laughs> but I see. You see, what we I think what we established over the over the little chat now is that we 
don't see any point in traditional martial arts as it used to be, inch ni san chi go back and forth for traditional karate. Yeah, if it's if it's boring, if it's superficial, and if it's um, just the Japanese garden of martial arts, clean, tidy, uh, um, <clears throat> bit boring, uh, good overview. This is clearly not enough. What we do not agree on is the question whether or not it can be an ego trip to do karate. You can. You can. Yeah, come on. It's it, maybe maybe it's even okay if people want to, um, you know. Train for fitness, uh, make a nice show with their cutter. Uh, maybe it's a nice thing. Maybe it's okay. The I think it's our karate master. Sorry, what was that? The biggest egos in the world. Oh yeah. Yes, um, and this is something that I found very, very disturbing because the traditional ways, traditional ways of doing karate, uh, see, always seem to include that you have a proper ego and that you build a network and you do a lot of politics and uh, you get in connection with people and um, most of it seems to be a matter of knowing the most people and pushing your buddies uh, so they push you. You know what? There are no masters. For me, to be genuine, for me to to. to be, um, somebody's worth in martial arts and to, to see the, the trajectory and the depth of knowledge, I have to see the students. So I, I never say, there's, uh, if somebody says to me, I'm a master, I say, well, nobody. There is only a difference. There are students and more advanced students. Ideally, only, yes. The, the only difference between me and my students is that I'm, I read further through the book, but I'm a student. I'm learning constantly. I'm no master, and I will never be a master. It would be so boring advice. I mean, why, why do I do... Am I still there? Yes, do you still here. Oh, I'm yes. very conscious about this now, but you see, it would be stone boring if martial arts was finished at some point exactly we, we had this had this master in germany who who started wearing a white belt after a while yeah. and asked why he wears a white belt he says well the circle is closed yeah. he knows it all now he's there yeah. for him it's done well, but the yeah. race ended hey, come on but how stupid and boring is it to do something and, and how passionate can you be about something where your way has ended you have a very big ego and a very small insight if you do this thing like that boring. you know it's not only about judging this person it's also about he must have been bored you know what i once read uh, uh, an interview with uh, luciano pavarotti opera and uh, he said uh, he, came, he practiced eight hours every day and the uh, journalist asked him but he is it possible to hear it? And he answered, Well, you want it. You will hear it, but I will. And if I don't practice in two days, I will hear it, and the expert will hear it. And if I don't practice in three days, you will hear it. So for me to be at the level, just to, to maintain a level, not, not, I'm not talking about advancing, but just to maintain a level, I have to keep on working very, very, very hard. And I agree with that totally. You have to be there and live it and experience it and and do it all the time. Otherwise, you lose it. It's useless to lose I it. I do expect someone who is on a master level um, to, to um, work on different topics than a beginner, though. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Klaus says he can't hear you correctly. Klaus says a lot of imp interesting things here. Um, for example, I uh, he says, I think starting out in any martial arts is almost always about ego. Yeah. The other aspects most become later for people inclined that way. And that is exactly the point. I expect from people who 
reach a masterly level that they find something else in their martial art than just the physical stuff that uh, you deliver to a beginner. It's um, one, one very good friend of mine whom I like to drag into one of those chats uh, um, soon. Um, uh, Jürgen Höller, full contact uh, karate teacher from uh, from Germany. Um, I complained to him once that I feel old and weak and uh, not not as uh, spirited as when I was younger. And he said, "That's good. That's the way to go." He said, um, because this is how the most sophisticated martial arts develop. You're not able to kick high and uh, and jump high and do all this external stuff. You have to do internal stuff. You have to work more on yourself, more on the the background knowledge. And I think that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I enjoy working with people who are older in my training, and I enjoy doing private lessons a lot. You know, when I was younger, a private lesson was somehow pfft, boring. I wanted to have a group. You know, I wanted to, to have a group and to, to uh, spread my wings, uh, or maybe not the wings, maybe, maybe actually I was a bit like a, um, a peacock uh, spreading out there and showing how cool I am in front of a class. <laughs> Today, private lessons are much more interesting because I have someone who brings their genuine points, their genuine problems, and their genuine uh, uh, abilities and ideas, and I work with them. It's brilliant fun. Because I'm not working only on um, external factors. I'm working on internal factors. I love this. Yeah. So um, this is indeed something that on the long term is more interesting. Working on things that are more internal, more, um, yeah, more sophisticated. Less uh, uh, based on our action. How old are you, Hero? Say that again. How old are you? You won't argue. No, how old are you? How old I am? <laughs> uh, I, I hear my uh, uh, my spouse yelling from the next room that I'm 23. No, no really, because I, I will be I will turn 51 in a couple of weeks. Well, uh, you have seven years on. Okay. Uh, so. Um, and I agree completely with what you say. And actually, one, uh, uh, one of the the, the main uh, things that steer my training right now is to be able to keep the same level of output, but with a le much level, lesser That's level it. of. That's it. You know, being able to do something great without pushing it. This is one of the things I love about this whole kakia and uh, and sticky hand stuff. Thank you. Yes. You are working, you are generating much more, well, let's say performance. You're creating much more performance with much less input. It's very valuable. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the main point for me at, at the moment. Yeah. Uh, we we be on 27th, right? <laughs> we meet on 25th of January, and we can uh, we can uh, play with uh, sticky hands a lot. Then that's nice. Uh, this is this is the, the the moment when I make a bit of advertising. Uh, I mean, we now have I can't see how many people we have uh, because let me see. We are talking with uh, seven people still. <laughs> uh, the the point is, 27th of January we meet in Schwerin yeah. in North Germany. Which is a lovely place to meet, and uh, we will we will train together. There will be a big big emphasis on kids training apparently, because the parents of that dojo um, that I'm teaching there have uh, requested um, that there is something for the kids and some information for them about violence prevention and how to. I love that. Well, it will, it will be very interesting. Sadly, I will I will have to do a lot of that thing uh, that stuff in German, obviously. Um, but we will have we will have lots of time to uh, to play, and we will have lots of time to chat because we said our next chat is on twenty seventh. Yes, yes. Five p.m. British time, six p.m. Uh, European time, uh, and we will chat straight from the dojo, or maybe maybe with a with a with a pint of something in front of us. I'm not I sure. Love that you call that for a European time, in contrast to the British time. But okay. 
<laughs> European, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, there, there, there we go with the Brexit remark. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, well, well. Uh, to, to, to elaborate on that, uh, how he has um, blamed my microphone issues constantly on Brexit during our test drive this morning. And I genuinely thought I have sorted them out, but apparently not. Oh, you're out. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. We're out. Yeah, we are so out. <laughs> Either way, either way. Um, yeah. I would say we had a bit more than an hour of chatting about the question if karate still has a value in modern times. And I think we have established karate is the best of all traditional martial arts that you could do as long as you do it in the right surrounding. I think that any martial art is the best as long as you do it with content, with meaning, with uh, understanding, with knowledge. Yes. And, uh, and I think... It brings us back to the, to the ever same issue. When I was in Denmark the last time, one of your students asked me because he moved to London. Yeah. And he asked me if I can uh, give him a hint for a dojo there. And uh, I searched and I searched, and in my network, there was nobody that I, where I could say, oh, go to this karate teacher. So in the end, I sent him to a, um, a Bujinkan yeah. dojo, which, uh, because this is something, this teacher is someone that I got as a hint by a friend of mine yeah. who is very, um, uh, very into Bujinkan. Our ideas are pretty much the same. We have, we have very similar ideas, very similar approach. It doesn't matter if it's Bujinkan or Karate in the end. Exactly. It all depends on the teacher and traditional martial arts will always be a question. Does somebody actually value tradition and value the old meanings and the deeper meanings of martial arts and transfers it to modern times? Okay. Or are you just doing some weird fighting dance from hundreds of years ago without actually exploring the meaning? Uh, or are you just doing a fancy kind of aerobics. I mean, yeah. how many people do I have who, who come to my classes here in Manchester come from a, from a karate background? So, oh yeah, cool. Um, because we, we, we are, the name of our dojo is Manchester Karate. Yeah. People who move to Manchester or people who have done karate in the past and want to start again or something, they find us. Then they come to our lessons and how often do I get as feedback, oh, this is awesome. I have done stuff that I have never done before, and this is so brilliant, and it goes so in depth. And then they never reappear. <laughs> and then so, I, oh, so uh, what, what happened? Yeah, <laughs> I, you seem to like it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I liked it. But honestly, um, I don't have a lot of time in my life. You know, I'm working very hard in my job, and I just want to have a bit of movement two, two times a week, or maybe one time a week. I really don't want to be bothered with all this stuff for my brain. <laughs> yeah, just, I just want to move. Well, go to the gym then. Don't go to a dojo. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. They go to a, to a traditional karate dojo. They they're being counted inch knee sun go back and down up and uh, up and down. They're doing their stuff. They're doing a bit of uh, a competitive kumite. That's a bit of fun. That's totally okay. It does have a value. It just is not, not what I would call karate. Not in my dojo. It's no, in mine, in mine neither. It's, <laughs> but it's it's funny. Uh, it's funny that uh, between the two of us, I am the diplomatic one, and you're the German one. I, I mean, I'm from South America, so I I I I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I have okay. trouble with my mouth shut. <laughs> you're the. <laughs> but I'm required to be rude and honest and so on, and still I am. Yeah, fantastic. Well, one last remark, because when I discuss this with my karate friends, other dojos, they, their argument is that if you don't have karate light, if you don't have this brainless, mindless training, you won't have students, because that's what sells. And my dojo is the big star. And I Your have dojo is it? The biggest. I have the, the biggest uh, membership uh, 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 amongst all my friends. We all have dojos. I have the biggest. We don't compete. We don't do nothing of that stuff. We actually we demand a lot of effort from our students. 
and we have a lot of members. So I think you are genuine and you are the real thing. Yes, you will lose the brainless uh, uh, practitioners that just want to sweat, but you will get those that want to understand. Uh, and uh, I, 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 it's like, I mean, it's like, I, I, I was inspired by Aikido. Oh, yes. In themselves, they don't have anything sports like. They just do Aikido to live it. And they are, they do it wonderfully. So, uh, that, I, I, I think the best we can do, and that's why, actually, uh, before we go, I would like to tell people how I find you. Because I'm oh, always, you haven't told me. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm always looking for content. I'm always looking for some for genuine people in the martial arts. And I used all these these tools we have with YouTube, and Facebook, and Google, and I'm scanning, 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 scanning. And of one thousand nine hundred nine ninety nine people, are not what I'm looking for. But once in a very, very, very long while, I found two people. I find, I find, I find this guy. This guy has the, this guy can actually walk the talk. Hmm. He has the talk, he has to walk. And I find you. And I find, you know how I found you guys? I found you doing pushing hands hmm. on YouTube. And I go, oh, who are these people? And I bought your book. And I said, I love these guys. Let's, I, I write to him. And you came over. And so uh, that's the only thing I think I'm good at is spotting quality. And I spotted you, and I spotted my weapons master, uh, my, my trainer in, in weapons, uh, Jose Navarro, that lives in Seville. I found him on YouTube and I and that's eight years ago. So you see, uh, uh, so for me, when I, 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 I scan and I find you guys, and that's because you have the ability to cook. That's why I saw you. The connection is a bit bad which is a bit sad because this sounds like um <clears throat> a, a lot of very flattering stuff honestly of course i have understood it all but uh <clears throat> i i don't stand compliments very well so i i pretend that i didn't understand it um, not what happened. yeah and let me say it like this i can give that back we have within the karate community it's not always easy to find people you can click with completely. <laughs> what we often find are people that like to train with us, but we never go the extra mile somehow. And I think it's very valuable to collect more people who like to work this way, exactly. yeah? in depth and uh, not, not afraid of uh, questioning uh, ritualized and uh, standardized uh, opinions yeah but especially people who are not drowning in ego which is really a big issue i have met a lot of masters that i liked a lot in terms of content and that i would have liked to work closer with but um i don't want to have a pissing contest with people that i want to learn with yeah and you don't want to be a part of somebody's empire. yeah that's obviously the other thing yeah but you know what? We are in the business of snoring holy cows, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we are. Oh, here Klaus uh, said something again. I want um, Klaus to be in on this because he's absolutely, coming. With absolutely. I talked to Klaus already. Klaus is um, a very experienced teacher, and he does a lot of Kung Fu, and he visits our seminars very often. Okay. And. Um, he just brought historical European martial arts into the discussion just now. It seems he, uh, he fights like knights or Landsknechts, which is um, 
the the German the German word for a for a medieval um, mercenary, a soldier. Yeah. Um, sounds interesting. But anyway, I think we should have Klaus here because he has a lot of ideas. But maybe we should say that we do need people who are willing to open their webcam for us. <laughs> and a mic that works, please. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, good. We chat again, probably tomorrow or whatever, but we will meet officially here on 27th, right? Yes. So the next karate chat on 27th from Schwerin in Germany. And then we have a look how we go on from there. But there is one other event that I would like to mention. We are trying our first webinar on January 9th, yes. which is something that we do just among our friends, because it's supposed to have a lot of microphone hiccups and other things. <laughs> but whoever is interested, let's uh, drop us a line. We keep you informed. Yeah. Thank you, Hori. That was funny. Let's yeah. do that again. 26, uh, 26, <laughs> 26 officially. And um, <clears throat> 27th. Darn. 27th yes. in Schwerin. Uh, yeah. And besides that, we talk soon. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. I'll, our next challenge here is to stop this chat. Just click on the live button. Yeah, this is... Uh, actually, clicking on the live button does nothing. No? No. <laughs> All right, Hori. See you later. <laughs> Take care. Have a lovely evening. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs>